So, um, hello everyone. I am Maria Lukianitz. I work at Adobe um, and I'm working on a team which builds Adobe.com website. And um, Adobe.com website is migrating to edge deliveries, so I will use the next um, nine minutes, 40 seconds to talk about it. I will show you as much as I can. Um, first, a bit about our size. We are a very big website. Um, we have lots of use cases. Approximate numbers, don't trust the slide, but yeah, around 90 sites, locales. Depends also on the part of the website. 40 languages, we have several hundred authors working on the content. And um, we are divided, the engineering team, into several teams across the globe. There is this shiny slide here. Um, one could joke that we have 24 hours a day development because colleagues from India are going to sleep, Europe is working, and then US colleagues are slowly waking up. Um, yeah, so huge team, lots of use cases, different stakeholders per team, um, sometimes different environments per team, different repositories. Um, with the Previous IAM, we had always rely on the common code base to put everything reusable in there. And uh, we had uh, several consumer projects for each parts of the website that would um, inherit basically this common code base and anything specific goes into the consumer project. When we uh, decided to move everything and everyone uh, to Milo, to the edge delivery, we decided to follow the same approach. And yeah, here I'm introducing the new name. It's uh, the common code base. We called it Milo. Um, there is a story how we name this common code base. So the previous one, maybe some of you heard about Dexter. Can someone raise the hand who heard about Dexter? Some hands, good. So mostly internal uh, because Dexter was never shared publicly. And it was never used actually within Adobe either, even for consultants. Um, with the Milo, we hope for the different story, it's open source. And I will focus today mostly on the Milo. Um, so again, what is it? It's a central code base uh, that we use for the Adobe.com website. It's not meant to be reused by others. It's not core components or anything, uh, but it is used to be as a kind of a showcase, an example, and it's open for people to check how we uh, solve any problem coming our way as a huge website with a lot of people working on it. And um, we are changing, now that we went open source, we are changing our communication as well within the team. We are not using anymore the Jira tickets, Slack channels, or email chains for the, any important technical discussion. We have a rule to put it on the GitHub discussion. They're also open under the adobe.com, no, just Adobe, GitHub, adobe.com discussions. I have all links in the last slide. So you can go there and check if someone already was thinking about the issue that you hit with the edge delivery. Um, yeah. This is a bit about the life cycle that we've set up for the developers uh, for the edge delivery. Um, the beginning is, since it's a migration project, we don't start from scratch. We normally get some requirements of some existing component, right? So we are migrating uh, components from IAM. And the component in IAM is not exactly a block on edge delivery, but often you would have this match. Um, so I will give a brief example today with the uh, cart component. As a developer, I always uh, start by thinking how many variations of the cards I have on the website. And I think if I can standardize them. So we are trying to follow now this uh, 
rule to use the consonant. It's an Adobe standard for design. And we go through uh, all the, let's say, 20 variations of existing use cases on the current website and try to think, OK, which stuff we can avoid, which we don't need anymore, what configuration options in this huge IAM dialog we can skip now, because uh, we use the SharePoint for the um, authoring, and it's obviously is not IAM dialog anymore. So we take uh, the flexibility from authoring and we turn it into some code uh, controlled behavior. Because updating code in Milo in, in edge delivery is super cheap and super fast. And uh, we question every flexibility that uh, authoring had before in IAM world. So once we discussed with our authors and they agreed to what we proposed to them, um, sometimes it's a bit problematic. <laughs> um, we can start building our component. And uh, you already heard today, it's uh, basically the matter of the JavaScript and uh, CSS. We are buildless so far and try to keep it that way. Um, once uh, you are ready, I will demo, hopefully I will talk faster. Uh, once you are um, ready with your feature, it's the most important moment comes for testing, I will talk about it later. Um, but first, a bit of advertisement. Um, I also come from the Java development world, and of course, feeling quite intimidated even in the last still two years working on the uh, JavaScript and feeling the power of the front end engineers suddenly shifted the team. Uh, but it's extremely easy to develop with the edge delivery. Um, the onboarding process is super fast. Today there was presentation how to set up local IAM. That's not needed anymore. So all it takes is really to clone the fork clone repository, to install the uh, CLI tool, and <laughs> um, basically you are done. So uh, you develop against uh, production content, if you wish, any, any of the production content part of your SharePoint website. You don't need to uh, set up anything local, no installation of service packs. And if you maintained the website with the uh, very, the zoo of the IAM instances, it will feel super good after the pain. Um, so back to the topic of uh, testing. Um, once your PR is merged, if it's a common code base, it's live for everyone, for every consumer. Um, it's very cool because your feature does not need to be updated the, with the, some bundle checking in the IAM OSGI console, but it's not cool when you break stuff. It's almost, yeah, it's broken immediately for everyone. So you have to have super uh, restrictive um, process for the um, merging your PRs. It's not just review. You need to have uh, a lot of checks, you need to have integration tests running, and you need to have a person verifying that it's working. So it's important. Um, I will show maybe very quickly later the PR, how it looks like for us. And yeah, actually, let's just switch to demo. So one thing uh, to start with, yeah. I no, just wanted to show that pretending I'm a new developer just cloned this uh, to my laptop and I start the... It's all... You don't have to read code today, it's okay. Um, so it will start the local environment and I have some page in the SharePoint already. I just bring it here and I can update my stuff, right? So I'm on the branch now where I messed up with uh, some styles, uh, but if I switch to the main branch, it will look back again. Uh, so I'm changing the color of the card. Um, so this is for the local development. As I said, just helix up, you are done, you do your changes, you commit uh, and you push your branch. And uh, the next cool thing comes, once your branch is pushed, um, you can send it to everyone within the organization and you can try your code, obviously, on every page. Um, so here, uh, this is the notation of how the edge delivery uh, serves. Uh, the first is always the branch name, 
Second is the repository name, and the last one is the owner of repository. So I created my branch was called the card blue. All I need to do is just to uh, change the branch, and I can send it for QI engineer for testing. 20 seconds, oh God. Um, now, very quickly and cool thing I wanted to show. Uh, we have not just one project, right? We have consumers, and consumers want to have their own repositories, and they want to have their all sh uh, own SharePoint uh, um, storages. So obviously, I, I pushed my branch to the Milo repository. It's not existing in the other consumer repository. So for that, Milo has developed a uh, trick. Uh, we have this uh, Milo lips parameter. Um, you can see here this different repository. And here I can provide the branch name from the Milo repo, and it will load my changes from that branch. So basically, it's kind of cross repo yeah, loading. This is very important again, because every time you push something, you have to check it also on consumers to be sure that everything is good. Um, I guess that's it. <laughs> yeah, I showed what I could. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Thank you.